Afternoon everybody. It's that time again. Uh, we're going to do chapter 13 titled Order to Chaos. Um, it's not much news. I mean, same stuff as before. Uh, the editing for Dammit Bree is almost finished. Um, I'm working on book three for the Order of the Trident right now. Filling out some timeline stuff, which is kind of a pain, but I'll get it. Um, that's the trouble whenever you're working with a multiple multiple books in a series that span a certain amount of time is you have to find where every piece fits in perfectly and while most of it's in my head some of these storylines interlap a little bit and it's kind of it's difficult to put it on paper where everything fits in but I'm working on it and I will get it but let's get into this so I can get back to work <clears throat> Darkness wrapped around him on all sides. He couldn't tell where one where one ended and the other began. Swiping wildly, Gareth felt his cutlass bite into one of the foul creatures. Spinning around, he connected with another. The shadows were starting to fade, allowing him to see the moonlight rain down upon him. Glancing around at the pile of dying drew afar, he lunged, one, lunged in once again, feeding the numbers. The black sticky blood dripped from his face. He didn't need to look down to know he was covered in the soupy substance. It's not the first time, it won't be the last, he thought. Another body fell at his feet, washing over him with a sense of pride. A satisfied, wicked smile glowed bright in the enveloping darkness. Ravion spun around, twirling his long sword between thrust. To the untrained eye, his actions were sloppy and misguided, but to a seasoned combat, each strike, each strike was calculated... Each stripe was a calculated step in his overall plan. He danced through the shadows, naturally avoiding the lethal blows from the unseen attackers. There had to be hundreds of them, but somehow they could never get close enough to strike, not while he was moving anyway. He felt his blade pass through another body, unhindered by the resistance. One would fall, another would take its place. A sadistic laughter reached his ears, uh, seeming to burn through the darkness. The tone ringing familiar, uh, ringing familiar to him. He moved toward it, feeling, uh, feeling, I'm sorry, felling several of the black-skinned creatures as he went. For the first time since he'd stepped from the pub, he was able to see anything other than the void. A familiar face lingered out among the black. He could see Gareth's wicked smile, lost in pleasure with so many dead drew afar around him. Gareth stabbed his cutlass into the blood-soaked earth and knelt down beside his freshest kill. Pulling the dagger from his waist, he sliced one of its ears and tucked it into his pouch. He glanced at the approaching scout, returning to his feet. Ah, glad you could join me. He pulled the blade free and spun around to decapitate another. <coughs> he, er, Cain thrust his great sword into the shadow, uh, watching the dark fluid, uh, dark fluid pull to the pull on the floor. Uh, the shadow faded, revealing another of the beast. A woman cried at his feet, her rose-red colored dress, a ro rose-colored dress torn and soaked. It clung to her, but she appeared unharmed. Kane grabbed hold of her hand and pulled her to her feet. Get to the rear. The others are already back there. She rushed toward the back room, obeying his instruction. He looked over at Malachi, pulling a saber from, from one of the dead creatures. Several of the creatures littered the ground, leaving the room free of shadow. He glanced back at the barkeep, peeking from the barricaded kitchen door. Most of the patron, patrons were able to take refuge, though a few had been lost. He walked over to the fair-haired lord, cleaning off his rapier and dagger. Lord Remley, what are you doing? These creatures are in my lands. I won't sit idle while they attack my people. He stood to his towering height, gesturing toward the door. I aim to march out that door and confront him head on. My lord, if I may, Cain paused, adding the illusion of request. You don't know how many are out there. This town has suffered enough this night. Do not allow it to claim, or do not allow it the chance to claim their leader as well. My friend and I will go out and fend them off to our last breath. Might I recommend you remain here as a last defense, should we fail? The towering lord thought through his options for a moment. I suppose you're right. And while I don't like it, I'll remain here. 
If you're able, my men are stationed a mile south. Any way you can reach them, do so. We need all the reinforcements we can get. Understood, my lord. Kang gave a respectful bow and spun around, searching for the swashbuckler. Malachi stood beside the door, cleaning his fingertips with a dagger. You ready? Kane nodded, grabbing hold of the door latch. Pulling it open, he stepped into the night. Clearing the door, er, hearing the door click behind them, they raised their weapons, the fire already upon them, uh, surrounded by an unseen force. As the pair, or as a pair, they swung and dodged, using each other's style to defend their openings. One would swing while the other blocked. Together, they cut their way into the un unending darkness, hoping to fell as many as possible before they met their ends. He could feel the chill of death on the back of his neck. They were, uh, they swarmed all around, encircling him. Gareth dodged a wild swipe, pushing the scout out of the way. The man could clearly handle himself, but his fancy style made it difficult to anticipate. Last thing he wanted was to get the man killed by felling, uh, failing to watch his back. Ravion caught himself, glancing back at the broad warrior. Had, er, had it not been, had it not been for the shove. Uh, an unnoticed scimitar would have bit into his spine. For that he was thankful, though the warrior cl clearly wasn't used to fighting with a unit. Ravion plunged his sword into one of the revealed beasts, using the momentum to send him back towards his companion. Despite his calm, or despite his calm, sweat beaded down his face. How are there so many? More importantly, how did they get so close without alerting anyone, he thought. Gareth felt one of the wicked uh, curved blades bite into his arm. It wasn't deep, but it would cause him a bit of pain for a while. Grimacing the pain, he glanced hold of the crude weapon, pulling its welder close. He brought his head forward, slamming, slamming it into the dark skin's nose. Uh, it's crunched beneath the or it crunched beneath the impact, re uh, refusing to wait for him to recover. Gareth uh, grabbed. Or Gareth stabbed him in the stomach, letting gravity carry carry it off his blade. He looked around, unable to see the end of the assault. A heavy sigh escaped his lips. Exhausted and ready to rest, he lowered his guard and closed his eyes, expecting to join his wife and son. The brief moment felt like an eternity. He waited, hoping for the longing sting that would be his end. A familiar shout rose his curiosity. He opened his eyes, seeing the half-orc slam into the side of the large group, toppling them with ease. Krennan slashed wildly, tearing into the unsuspecting foes, their shadowy spears fading with each death. Seeing the half-orc jump into the fray, excitement rushed him with the thought of a challenge, renewed vigor coursing through his veins. Uh, he raised his cutlass and charged. You damn green-skinned dummy, you ain't claiming all the glory! He crashed into another group, launching them back several feet. Taking position behind the half-orc, he de deflected a swipe and ran his aggressor through. Ravion made his way toward the pair, cutting a path for them. They fought, protecting each other, slowly moving back toward the pub. Each step twisted, uh, each step twisted their stance, cycling them around with the movement. It kept them refreshed and ready for, a, ready for the next attack. One by one, they caught a glimpse of the tavern doors, Kane and Malachi holding their own right outside them. They neared, opening their ranks to invite the others. The five joined, keeping their backs together, forming a deadly spear in the midst of an army. The outnumbered warriors cut, uh, cut them down in troves, thinning the herd, but they remained outnumbered by a phenomenal degree. A high-pitched horn echoed in the night, calling the Drufar to a halt. Gareth took the opportunity to stab as many as he could reach. The darkness faded, uh, returning the town's post, post lanterns to sight. Hundreds of Drufar moved into the open, or, uh, surrounding the already entrapped warriors. The impenetrable wall uh, looked upon them, an unquenchable bloodlust in their eyes. The five stood ready, their weapons high, anticipating an attack. Ravion glanced around, hoping for a miracle. We were surrounded on all sides, save for the sealed pub doors. Hundreds stand ready to cut us down, each one with a city full of bodies worth a reason. Why do they hold? His questions were answered as if he'd asked them aloud. A wide path opened, allow allowing a single drew afar to pass through the ranks. He looked over the, or he looked older than the rest. His long, stringy white hair pulled into the back and tied into a braid. He wore a blackened leather with with a silver clover design, 
and lay it around the edges. An ornate rapier, rapier hung at his side, um, appearing to radiate a faint glow in the excessive dark. In it sat Evayo, he hissed, stopping several feet away from the group. Gareth pointed his cutlass at the creature. Speak that vile tongue at me again and I'll cut it out. The creature smiled, his elongated canine showing for the briefest moment. A smooth, collected voice radiated from his mouth, seemingly misplaced by the harshness of his previous words. As if your threats have any effect on me. You're only alive because you have something that belongs to me and I want it back. Gareth spat at the creature, his stringy saliva falling several feet short. I was disgusted by you before I knew you were capable of intelligent speech. Now that I know you are, it just makes me want to slaughter you that much more. The creature smiled. You doubt our intelligence. Uh, if you had it, or if you had the slightest idea, you'd throw yourself upon your own sword just to escape our wrath. Ravion placed his hand on Gareth's shoulder, hoping the jester would calm the bald warrior. Stepping to the front of the group, he spoke. What item do you believe us to possess? The black-skinned Afar looked over the young dollar eye. His inter interests were evident, but his motives remained hidden. You're something unseen for quite some time. Perhaps I'll keep you as my own personal pet once all this is said and done. Ravion smiled, letting the notion hide his thoughts. The item, he repeated. Oh, it's nothing much. Just something a friend was holding for me. You took it from him earlier this day, and I want it back. The sea of Drew Afar opened, allowing the dragon's head through, still mounted upon the pike. There were many items among the dragon's treasure. Perhaps if you told us what you were looking for, we may be able to tell you where it is. I have a better idea. Why don't I just kill you one at a time until you tell me where all of it is? I'm sure I can find it myself at that point. Not going to happen, Gareth demanded, ready to jump onto the commander. The commander smirked, uh, smirked at the warrior's words, licking his lips. You're so full of hate and despair. I think I may want to keep you as well. I'll make you my plaything. There's nothing quite like a well-broken uh, stallion. He raised his hand, facing the palm toward the group. Bring me the, er, bring me the Mali one, he demanded. The Jurafar rushed in, encircling tight around the group. Two of them grabbed hold of Gareth, securing his arms. They tried to fight, tried to move, tried to perform the slightest action, but found it impossible. Some unseen force was holding them stationary. Gareth screamed his discontent, annoyed further at the lack of sound. He screamed, kicked, bit, clawed, but nothing worked. His body was not his own. The Druafar pulled them from the group and, and drug him to the center. He was on display for all to see. They pushed him, forcing his knees to buckle. Placing him on his knees, he, they stepped away, leaving him un, unattended. The commander smiled at the kneeling warrior, approaching him. You see, sometimes puny, rebellious humans have to be taught lessons when they interfere uh, with beings beyond their understanding. He reached for his pants, pulling his armor plating to the side. Gareth felt a pressure in his jaw, forcing his mouth open. He stared in horror, unable to resist. The Drufar commander took a step toward him, dropping his leather breeches to his knees. Erect and demanding attention, he moved closer to the defeated human. Gareth wanted to close his eyes, hoping he could hide from what was about to follow, but they wouldn't obey. He was being forced to watch his own sodomy. He felt something fly past his head, hearing it connect. A sickening scream echoed out from the commander. Unable to comprehend what had just happened, he watched the handle of a scimitar protrude from the Jurafar's exposed crotch, bouncing from the force of the hit. His body under his own control, he reached out, taking hold of the hilt. Forcing all of his strength into it, he thrust the blade deeper, driving it straight through the commander. The curved blade caught the pelvic bone, sending it up into his stomach. Gareth twisted the sword, letting the dull spine rip his body open. It was too kind to cut him quickly. Forcing as much pain as possible, he watched the would-be rapist drop to his knees. Uh, his dark face white from loss of blood. Content with the weakening screams of pain, he ripped the crude, rusted blade free. Stand to it, standing to his full height, he grabbed the dying Drufar's head and drug the blade across, removing one of the pointed ears. Letting it rip free, assisted by the semi-sharp blade, he claimed his trophy and placed the tip of the, tip of the blade into the hole where the ear had been. 
Jabbing quickly, it punctured out the other side of the Druifar's head. Gareth let go of the sword, letting body and all fall, fall to the earth. The Druifar hissed, unsure what, or unsure what to do without their commander. Confusion took hold. Many trampled each other, while some simply retreated from the darkness once they came. Uh, the select few charged, hoping to fight, being cut down moments later. Gareth turned, finding, finding his companions at the door. Uh, looking over them, he noticed half or noticed the half-orc held but one sword, its twin lodged in the commander's head. Walking toward the group, he placed his hand on the half-orc's shoulder. Thank you for saving me from that. Not suitable for anyone. Krennan hope you do the same if it were me. Gareth nodded his head in understanding. Permission to speak? Malachi stated more than asked. You must be blessed by Corrin. After all, you nearly took a mouthful of Drewcock, uh, and the only one to help you was the one who had the least reason to. Krennan leaned in, whispering louder than intended. I aimed for his head. Looks like you got it, Ravion laughed. Gareth, Gareth shook his head, looking at the group of warriors around him. Do me a favor and never speak of this again. Ravion retrieved the sword, placing it in its, er, into its sheath. He looked around at the severed... Several dead creatures laying around them. I can't make any promises, though I think it'd be wise to figure out what they were after and safeguard it. We can't risk failing next time. Patrons stared at the half-orc, uh, breaking their gaze when he made eye contact. It was strange to see such a large barbaric brute wearing such finely crafted clothing and sitting at the table of respected warriors. Krennan liked the way the silk felt against his skin. It was much softer than the twill he'd been accustomed to. The ale was weak, but after several tankers, he was beginning to feel its effects. The food was much better. Everything was sweet, from the taste of the meat to the bread. It was as if it had been made with the purpose of enjoyment, something far greater than simply to survive. He glanced out the north window to see another caravan of stone and lumber make its way up the hill, leaning over in his oversized chair, um, at least compared to human standards. It creaked under the shifting weight. You think they'd be done soon? No, Krennan. It'll take several months for them to finish the keep, Malachi answered. What well, takes so long? Orc homes built in days, not months. Orc homes are much simpler in design. Imagine building hundreds of orc homes into one large home with many layers. I see. Still, it takes so long. Malachi looked at the others, hoping for assistance. Must be nice to have such a simple outlook on life. I already looked. They're not done yet. No, I mean... Oh, never mind. Ravion busted into laughter at the sailor's failed attempt. Resolving himself, he pulled a large piece of parchment from his satchel and laid it upon the table, careful to keep it off the food. Uh, unrolling it, a map showed the area for months in each direction, outlining the southern shores all the way up to the orc lands of Tolgar. Several rocky area or several rocky areas were marked with a singular stamp with a trident in the center. These areas have been inspected, and we haven't found any evidence of dru of Drew activity. There are several more locations to be searched north of Heroes Gate, but as it stands, Southern Damora seems free, aside from the few cave entrances cave entrances we haven't found yet. <coughs> <coughs> What's the news on the lowest level of the keep, Gareth asked, paying close attention to the map. It's complete. The vault is in place and the prisoners are well secured. Have the locks been placed on the vault? Kane leaned in toward it, or leaned forward in his seat. The stones are in place. Nobody can get into that vault without one of us being present. Ravion leaned closer, making sure nobody could hear or could hear them. Moreover, the contracts have been carried out. The only people that have any knowledge of the vault's existence, let alone the locking stones, are all sitting at this table. Gareth sat back, content with the knowledge. Very well. The guards have been asking when the tabers, or tabards are going to be ready, Kane added. I'll be picking them up from the tailor tomorrow afternoon, along with the flag. Malachi offered taking the swig from his tankard. Gareth sat up again, resting his elbows on the table. Good. It'll be good to see the order's colors on the chest of our men. I'll be taking a small detachment into the catacombs in the morning. Hopefully we can find it this time. And that is the end of this chapter.
So we'll continue next week with chapter 14. Uh, now that the story's coming together, things will start to amp up and it'll be a little bit more enjoyable than it was for the first 10 chapters or so. Uh, I always seem to recap what I say at the beginning and what I say at the end, so since I've already pretty much said everything at the beginning, we're just going to call it there. But you guys have a good evening, and you know, if you would, if you haven't purchased my book already, it'd be greatly appreciated if you did. If you can't afford a paperback ebook, they're two ninety nine on Amazon. Um, and that's cheaper than the price of a burger at most places. Um, and the final versions are out. We've got the audiobooks working on working on the formatting for those so they can be read, and then we'll have another format for you guys to enjoy it in, and preferably somebody who speaks a little better than I do. But anyways, that's all I've got. You guys have a good night, and we'll see you next time.